All right, so today I wanted to talk about the developer survey for Stack Overflow. And the thing I want to bring you to your attention is if we look at all the respondents here, as you can see, the number one language used is JavaScript. If we look at the professional developers, the number one language is used is JavaScript. And if we go to learning how to code, the number one language that they use is Python. And this is actually kind of telling because for whatever reason, people who are just getting into like coding, people who are just learning how to code, they tend to use Python. And this is kind of like counterproductive to what is actually required in business. Because in business, um, what are most developers paid to do? Most developers are paid to write web applications. And this is kind of reflected here because look, JavaScript, SQL, HTML, CSS, TypeScript, C Sharp, uh, and we even say like Java. Yeah, I think Java has a couple of like web frameworks. Anyways, so most of the like top 10 languages here are associated with web development in one way or another, right? What is Python good for? Python is good for gluing functions together, right? So uh, it's it's kind of designed for uh, scientists. It's kind of designed for people who uh, write uh, small like uh, scripts, I guess. Uh, if you uh, look in the news, or if you actually actually let's uh, actually let's ask Google this question. Right. So <laughs> so it comes up right away. Okay. So what's like the big trend right now? AI, right? If I type in, what's the best language to learn to do AI coding, right? So I kind of like formulate this question in a way that's um, kind of naive, right? And Google gives me Python. Python is the best language to learn to get into coding. Or Python is the best language to learn to get into AI. Now, this isn't necessarily incorrect. Uh, there are very good libraries for Python to do AI and stuff. But um, let's just go back to the developer survey. Now, here's why Python may not be the best language for beginners. Because of the job prospects. As you can see, what's the number one thing that developers report doing? Full stack development. Second is backend development. Student, that's not really a role, but uh, then we have front end development. Uh, actually, this is actually surprising to some people, but um, if you have a developer who can code the back end and the front end, you don't really need uh, front end developer, right? So front front end development is kind of like a specialized thing. So I guess you'd need to learn uh, like a lot about UX design uh, to follow like best practices of like, how do you lay out stuff on a page? So it, it's a, like, kind of like a completely different thing. It's, it's a, a much more specialized field than uh, full stack development. Uh, that being said, um, let's actually scroll down and look at, uh, let's look at AI and machine learning. Yeah, so a data scientist or a machine learning specialist. 1%, so only 1% of developers do machine learning or are machine learning specialists or do data science. Compared to 30% of people who do some kind of web development, right? Also, there's also one more thing I want to show you, security professional. So um, this is kind of for people who say that they want to get into cybersecurity. Security professionals only account for 0.6% of developers. So, I mean, I'm not going to say you can't get into it. I'm just saying that it's a very small market. Uh, I would even say, yeah, so even game developers. So game and graphics developers, they account for a bigger percentage of the market and then security professionals. So I, I just want you to uh, know that if you're trying to get into security, right? So what did I want to? So what did I want to show you? Okay. Uh, so uh, a couple of more thoughts on this before I move on. Uh, so professional developers, Go is 14% of developers uh, with learning to code. Go is at 9%. So this kind of shows you that the push to uh, use Go is coming from professionals, not beginners. Uh, meanwhile. Rust is being used by beginners more than it is used by professional developers. So as you can see, Rust is at 11% for professionals. With beginners, Rust is at 
eighteen percent, and this is this is really unfortunate because I don't think that Rust is a good beginner language. A uh, good beginner language would be something like C, Java, C Sharp, uh, maybe TypeScript. So here's the thing: uh, Python and Java script are not good beginner languages because they're really not well designed. Uh, they're more of a necessity language, so there are languages that you need to use, not languages that you'd want to use, if that makes sense. And there is one more thing I want to show you. So AI tools, right? When I saw this, uh, so I really feel really, really, really bad for the people who picked no, and I don't plan to use AI tools. So this is kind of like saying I refuse to use Google when I work, right? So. If I run into an issue, I'm not going to use Google to find something. I'm just going to, uh, you know, like read the documentation for like hours upon hours until I magically stumble upon something. Uh, if you're not using AI tools right now, you are basically, you, you really need to use AI tools. I really hope no one watching this is part of the 23% who refuses to use uh, AI tools. Um, Refusing to use AI tools is kind of like saying, I refuse to use an ID, I refuse to use uh, internet connection, I refuse to uh, use a calculator. Uh, this is just like uh, this is just like the future, right? So this is just technology. This is just like an easier way to... Uh, so the easiest way to find information now is to ask a, a large language model. I don't care if it's like a local model or if it's something that you use, uh, like ChatGPT, for example. Using large language models is just going to be expected because it's the most efficient way to find information. And I can actually demonstrate this. So I asked ChatGPT how to return an object in Go, right? And it gave me five results, five different ways of returning something. Let's ask that in Google. So, I mean, it gives you very specific results, right? So this is someone asking on Stack Overflow how to do something. Uh, the next thing is W3Schools, a very good website. Then we have Reddit. This is a really awesome website for technical discussion. And uh, what do we have here? And then we have a bunch of Medium blogs, which are really awesome. 